Hey parents, happy Teenager Tuesday. Uh, we are in part five of In the World and Not of It. Uh, if you've missed the last four weeks, I would very highly encourage you to go back and uh, listen to those first four weeks. We had uh, Pastor Joseph Kellogg uh, that's been with us on the podcast kind of talking through this idea of how do we raise our children, our, our kids, our students, our soon-to-be college adults in the world, uh, but not of the world. And uh, so this is part five. But before we jump into that, I do want to let you know, starting next week, uh, John and Melissa McKenzie will be with us for, for a series that we're going to do with them that is a Q&A. And uh, we've already gotten a, a bunch of questions from parents. We're going to try to cover as many of those questions as we can. Um, but if you haven't gotten to send in your questions yet, it is not too late. Just email me your questions uh, that you would want to ask uh, Pastor John and Melissa at uh, my email is Fellowship. Dot net hopefellowship.net um, and then one more one more reminder we have a ton of stuff going on around this summer at uh, Hope Fellowship at Hope Students and uh, in order to check out what we got left uh, whether that is to get on the camp wait list uh, to look at the availability on missions trips or whatever that looks like uh, just go online to hopefellowship.net slash students uh, jump on there. All right. Uh, finishing out, I thought it would be um, helpful to just kind of do some quick hitters on In the World, Not of It. Some of this is reiterating what we've already talked about, but maybe this is a memorable one-liner. And, uh, and uh, at the end, it's just a reminder that I think as parents, we always need to hear, and I always want to encourage you with it. So um, we'll, we'll get to that though. Number one, uh, in the world, not of it, keep them plugged into a Christ-centered community. And the key word there is keep. Keep them plugged in to a Christ-centered community. Uh, now, I'm a huge advocate, obviously believer, and it's my job in uh, uh, young people being plugged into a youth group, being plugged into uh, our youth group, uh, Hope Students. I think it, it is an amazing place. But the key there is keeping them plugged in to a Christ-centered community. Now, that can be church. That uh, absolutely can be youth group. But that can also be um, people on their sports team, Christ followers in the band. Um, the the goal is being plugged in with other Christ followers. It can be um, uh, kids of people who you do small group with. And uh, it could be people in the neighborhood. It can be longtime friends. Um, let's keep our students plugged in with Christ-centered people. And that is one of the best things that we can do for them over time. You know that. Um, and, and a lot of you are working on that all the time. It's just probably a reminder from, for all of us to keep them plugged into a Christ-centered community. And that can look different at different ages, different times, um, and even different locations. Maybe you're brand new to the area or you've moved away and you're still listening to this podcast. Just whatever we do, let's keep them plugged in. Uh, number two, address their heart and soul more than behavior. Obviously, there is behavior that we have to address that you probably addressed yesterday or this morning. Um, addressing behavior is necessary. However, I do believe, and from everything that I've read and the people that I've talked to, it is more important, it is more permanent um, to address who they are more than what they do. If we remind them of who they are over and over and over again, more than focusing solely on behavior. Again, you got to do both, but addressing uh, who they are, their heart, their soul, who, uh, how God created them, that over time is more important than fixing any kind of behavior. Um, because we can fix a, we can change a habit, but if our heart and soul doesn't change, then did we really change, or did we just change for a season? You know. All right, number three, your life, you as a parent, your life is a template for your student, uh, or for how your student will interact with the world. Um, we've talked about this before on this podcast: is that uh, what they see you do will be more of what they emulate versus what you say. And again, this is not any groundbreaking things like uh, you know this like monkey see, monkey do. It's not I tell you and then you do. It is um, the template that they see you living your life in is more than likely the the world view that they will have about the world and in the world. So. Uh, a, a good question that I've written down that I've started to think and pray through is for me with the students at Hope is if my life is emulated 
perfectly as a template, what would their faith and their faith, uh, their daily faith, their consistent interactions with God look like? If my student emulated the template of my life, what would their faith look like? It's always a good time to kind of look internal. Number four, um, expose them to the world in controlled doses, you know, in the world, but not of the world. Uh, Long term, we know, all parents know, you can't hide them from the world, but we can protect them from the world. And I think those, I think that can be a little bit different. If we exposed students to the world in controlled doses, meaning if we are intentional about conversations that we can have with our students before they interact with it in the world, then then we get to set the precedent and expectations about those things in the world versus them experiencing it, trying to make sense of it, and then coming back to you for some kind of like auto, you know, uh, correction, um, needed correction, clarification. Like what if we, all in wisdom, but what if we uh, exposed the world, the brokenness in the world, the bad parts of the world in controlled doses with our student? We were in it with them and we got ahead of it. I, I saw this quote, I can't find, Uh, or I found this quote. I don't think it's original for me. I can't find where it came from. But it says this, innocent does not need to mean ignorant. Innocent does not need to mean ignorant. We can know things and still be innocent. We can um, know things, understand things, and still live this pure life uh, for Christ, which I think goes very well into number five, which is separate temptation and sin. We do this with young people all the time when the conversation of uh, pornography comes up or any kind of temptation comes up. So much of the time, students feel that if they're tempted, then they've already done the wrong thing. There, there must be something wrong with them, wrong with their faith because they have temptation. If we can get ahead of that conversation and say in the world, but not of it means you will be tempted by the world, but temptation does not equal sin. Having a feeling... Uh, having a a temptation towards doing something does not mean that you have already sinned. Uh, Jesus was tempted, but he did not sin. There's a there's a uh, again a template that we can try to emulate as as parents as Christ followers, and we can help our students see that temptation is not the same thing as sin. Giving into temptation is the sin, but so much of the time students think because I feel this. I've already sinned and I've already sinned against God. And I think that's a trick that the enemy tries to use to uh, discourage our students into giving to in giving into giving into temptation because they feel like they've already done it. Separate sin from temptation. Number six, uh, equip them with scripture memorization. God's word is the best tool that we have to fight. Uh, Jesus used God's word to fight and Jesus used God's word in a better understanding of that, right? Even Satan tried to use scripture against Jesus uh, when Jesus was being tempted. Yet Jesus knew the context and the, the true meaning behind that scripture. And so do we as parents kind of go out of our way, better said, intentionally set up times to equip our students with God's word so that when temptation comes, they have the right tool to fight that temptation. And the best tool is God's word being embedded in our heart so that the spirit of God can speak even louder to our hearts. Number seven, number seven, remember, you've got this. You can do this. God is with you and so are we. Being in the world and not of the world is, uh, it takes a village for sure. And we're in it with you. We don't have all the answers, but we're trying our best to resource you, equip you, set you up to win. You're the hero. The youth group is not the hero. The family, the parent is the hero. The guardian is the hero. That is the goal. And uh, I, from time to time, I just want to make sure that we're reminding parents listening to this, that you can do this. You can do this. God is working in you. God is working through you. Even if you feel like you're not doing it right, doing it perfectly, you've messed up as a parent, remember that you can do this. God is with you. So are we. We are in the world, but we do not have to be of the world. And you as a parent and a leader and the person that cares about your student more than anybody else, can do this. You are succeeding. Keep it up. 
keep going. You are a rock star and the hero that they need in their life. We love you guys. Remember, you've got this. You can do this. God is with you. And so are we. We'll see you next week. Yeah.